last leg of the road trip here and we saved the best for last friend of the show and now this is cool worlds colliding here jack mcmullen and griffin conine joining us fresh off a home run last night griff appreciate you taking the time man absolutely any anytime <laughs> never never an issue <laughs> Never an issue. I'm glad to, hear, glad to hear that. So yesterday was the fourth game in a row that you've homered that I've been at. So I just got to pump myself up a little bit. But what really stood out to me in that game was Jared Schuster was locked in and, and he's been really tough on the league all year. He got you the first two ABs and then you go yard to dead center, the third AB. I, I feel like that's something that is like a maturity thing that just the more you play to be able to kind of put those two at-bats away and go yard the third AB. Is that something that you feel like has just gotten better for you in terms of being able to like put it away and go into that next AB and keep it fresh. Uh, yeah, I think so for sure. I think also as you get older, you start to like learn how to learn from the pitcher as the game goes along. I think I used to be a lot more introspective, like meaning I would look at what's going on with me rather than like what he's trying to do to me. And like, I'd be too one dimensional in that sense. So like learning what his fastball is going to do, what it looks like. And then like, you know, I saw a lot of them first at bat. I saw a lot of them second at bat. So, like, by the third time, you're like, if you're not on time, then, like, there's an issue there. So, finally got on time and, and uh, was able to barrel one pretty solidly. I feel like, especially in this game, when you're in uncomfortable situations, it's easy to just, like, rely on instincts and not really take the moment to think through games. Do you feel like the game of baseball over the last couple of years, you know, from high age, it doesn't like, like slow down for you a little bit where you can see what Jared Schuster is trying to do to you and adapt to the course of a game? Yeah, there's definitely, there's a lot more thinking now than there used to be, which like a lot of people, obviously when you're hitting well, like you're thinking less. And that's like, that's true, I would say about your actual swing. But you're always thinking, you always have to be thinking like pitcher. It's like a chess match, especially as you get higher and higher in the levels. You can't just rely on raw talent and ability to, to play for you. And I think that's why, that's why some guys like break through over more talented guys because they can play the mental game. They know how to like win the chess match. So yeah, definitely a lot more active thinking throughout the game, always studying pitchers, always studying patterns. And uh, that's probably been a big difference this year is, is seeing that, being able to execute it. How do you get better at that? Um, there's a lot of ways. I mean, I think the more, the more you rely on video and studying, and that's how you get confidence, I think. The more I see a pitcher and the more I can pick up on stuff. But also, like, things like meditation and slowing the game down and breathing, they're important, too. But those, like, those a lot of times get swept under the rug because, like, you want to focus on more things that are happening right now. But if you can add that part and be able to kind of use it when you need it, that's – I think a lot of big league studs are able to do that well. That's really interesting because, again, we were talking to Joey Weimer, and he said he totally disconnects from baseball and he leaves the ballpark. Do you feel like, that's you know, meditation even before you get to the ballpark is, is good for you and, you know, making sure you get a good night's sleep and you're taking care of your body at 8 a.m. when you wake up? That's, that's the best thing for you? Yeah. Yeah, all the above, I think. Like what, like Weimer said too, though, like it's important to to leave it here as much as you can. I don't think I'm never gonna be this much. Just like, <laughs> like he says, he completely turns it off. That's impressive to do. Um, I'm not the same in that way, but I think that the more you can, the more you'll be able to last and like throughout the season. You talk about the chess match. You've been winning the chess match as much as ever through May. You know, this has been a really awesome month to watch you play. W what has clicked for you in May um, through some of the best stretch stretches we've seen from you in a while? And it seems like you're just more comfortable from the walk per per uh, perspective, the strikeout perspective, using the whole field, and then adding in the power. It seems like you have that more well-rounded approach. What connected for you in May? Um, I'm definitely I'm seeing a lot more pitches this month, like a lot more. And obviously, they're starting to – um, you know, I had a slow start, so they're kind of attacking me often. And also, we have face Rocket City a good amount, and they have a lot of good arms. Which is crazy, um, by the way, because that wasn't the case last year, right? Yeah, it's complete 180, but um, after, yeah, after I started to swing it a little better, I think they, they started to be a little more careful with pitches, and that allowed me to see more and more pitches. And then, um, yeah, just better takes, honestly, better takes on tougher pitches, and then when you can do that, you know, you're seeing it, you know, you're seeing it deep, you know, you're seeing it late, but also, you know, being and staying on time. So um, biggest difference there is just, I've been walking a lot more this month. 
swinging, I feel like, less. And, uh, yeah, just make, making them count when they come in the zone. Some of the most talented pitchers in the Super Bowl this year. Because obviously Schuster was very good yesterday. He came in there. Um, I know you guys saw Silk Seth for a couple of uh, starts with Rocket City and the early goings. Who are some of the other guys that jump out to you? Uh, yeah, Rocket City had a few. Uh, Kai Bush was said, right? Kai Bush was, was really good. Really good. He just... Like we were, he didn't miss a spot, it seemed, for like six innings on it because we had the track man set up in the dugout on an iPad so we can see the zone. And every time I checked, he was hitting a corner of the zone, it seemed like. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he, I think he shut us out through like six. And then and then I actually rolled one to the second baseman weekly, and he didn't cover, he didn't get over in time. So I got a hit out of it. <laughs> and their manager, like, blew a gap. He was so pissed because he, like, he wanted his guy. It would He would have got out of it with a shutout. So that's where to run. I mean, I think he might have given up one more. Um, but yeah, he was like, that was crazy. He didn't, just was painting, like painting different spots. Wasn't missing. Like, I would get 2 0, and I'd be like, all right, like, you're just kind of gear it up. And then, like, he would just <laughs> dot one down and away. Like, nothing I could, couldn't even put it in play, probably. And I was just like, and then next one would be like, banger, curveball, foul it off. And then you're like, 2 2, just like that. When you were just in like a 2 0. About to get one, get get your best one off. So he did that a lot. He was good, and then um, hit someone else too. Brett Carey. Brett Carey was mad. Was that, that's a high spin fastball, yeah, right? The Brett first Carey. time he had eleven Ks. Eleven through Ks four, through four, and, and I was like, figuring out. I was like, what is happening? Because I'm coming up with the box score. Full disclosure: No offense to Brett Carey, I just was not familiar with Brett Carey. Right. Um, and I'm watching K on the play by play. K. K, K, K. So I'm like, I got to throw this game on. And every fastball was on a line. And we were talking about that, again, when we were in Biloxi with the guys there, about how each org has the way that they attack you. Um, and, and like you said, in the early going, you know, the trash pandas gave you some trouble because those guys were locked in and you hadn't really seen much from them. Right. Uh, last year, it was the Rays that were really difficult, right? And that's still difficult, but you've swung it pretty well against them this year. Would you say even even through the struggles of last year in Double A, just having those games under your belt against the Rays org and against some of these other orgs where you're playing them six days in a row, you kind of know organization to organization how they're going to attack you. Would you say that that's helped you now in your second stint in Double A? Yeah, I think I think uh, definitely understanding that like there's org lot like. There's, there's strategies consistent throughout the entire work. So, like, every level, will like, they have different arms, but they all seem like they will do the same thing. Um, and it's just understanding that. Because I think, like, in your head, sometimes you think, like, every pitcher is different. This guy's unique. Like, he's his own person. But, like, at the same time, like, he's still getting orders. Like, yeah. he's taking orders from a coach that's, like, we're going to call games this way. We're going to treat this hitters this way. So, learning that and, like, learning to, like, kind of accept it. Like, you can't be, you know, sitting middle in on a guy that's two seam and shows that, like, they're going to go away with everything. You can't uh, – so just molding your plan in that way. Because then I think a lot of times I, I wouldn't do that last year. and wouldn't be getting a pitch that I'm looking for, and it's a lot harder to hit when you're getting pitches that you're not looking for, even if they're good ones to hit. So definitely adjusting in that way and learning uh, – learning what to, what to look for. So you're walking as much as ever, as you mentioned. And, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing you make as much contact, whether you look at, like, zone contact, any metric, it's as good as it's been for you. Um, the power is still there, obviously, as well. Uh, and, the, and the strikeout rate is dropping. And you know that that's a topic that everyone's always going to bring up because there's no questions on your, your ability to hit it out of the yard. So, you know, how do you find the balance of – you know, getting those walks, but also picking your spots to be the guy who you are. And that's the guy who finished second in the entire minor leagues and home runs last year. You know, how do you find that balance of, I don't want to expand the zone and, you know, I still want to hit my home runs and pick my spots. Uh, you know, is, is that a difficult juggle or do you feel like that's part of the reason why you've been successful? Kind of, you found that balance. Um, yeah, I would say I've found it per se, but I think like I'm getting closer in the sense of like, it comes down to, I think just being selective, but like sticking to a plan, like not, not wavering just when they, you know, they might land a pitch that you weren't expecting, but like not just being like, all right, we're going to, doesn't mean the approach, doesn't we're going to flip to this yes. now because uh, now, now the plan changes. It's like sticking to it 
and trusting it and then um, trusting you'll make a mistake, which, like, you know, these guys will. And, like, when they're on, they're on, and sometimes they don't. You know, Kai Bush didn't make a mistake that game, really. I, I look at your first at-bat last game, 3-2. We, we were sitting there watching. You're fouling off pitches. You look, you look good. You miss a double down the line by about, like, six inches, and then he spins a curveball 3-2. Yeah. Like, that's one where you're like, you can't fault yourself, right? I mean, like, that's just a that's just a good yeah. executed pitch. That... A lot of – one thing I will say is just our – the hitting coach in AAA, Phil Plantier, he always – I didn't have a lot of time to work with him in spring training, but one thing that stuck with me was he would always say uh, – he was big on just, like, end the at-bat. Like, end it end it as soon as you can. Like, you don't want to, like – obviously, like, going deep into a bad bat is good, making the guy work, but what he meant by that is, like, if you get a pitch to hit, like, don't foul it off. Like, fuck you, like you put it in play, you know? Like, put it in play hard. And, like, that's where I would answer with that was, like, I felt like there was a couple I should have – you know, the ones I fouled off, I thought, you know, I should have – if I stayed through it more, that bat would have been over. Yeah. Don't give him a chance to land the 3-2 curve. That's – because you're right. That's that's a pitch that it's really hard to, like, put a good swing on. <laughs> um, so, I would have said, you know, I was beating myself up just in the sense that, like, good at bat. I got to see a lot of his pitches, which is good. Um, but would have liked to have ended it four or five pitches before, you know, on one of those pitches I thought I should have hit, so. How you end with that? If you go down, you know, via strikeout, like, how quickly can you shift that to just get ready to Yeah, I think that's been better this year, too. Um, there's definitely, like, a process to it. Like, got to have some kind of uh, evaluation that goes on in the head, just, like, figure out what went wrong like whether it was just like simply pitch selection simply like sometimes that is all it is it's like or he made good pitches and sometimes it's like maybe I wasn't making the right move you know like my, my, my move to the ball felt a little off it's like I missed a pitch I should have hit so but once I once I make the it happens pretty quick like five minutes and then whatever the conclusion is of that that's when it's flush and then it, if it's the wrong move then like that's that'll be the next next at bat. I'm like that's my only focus. Like get back to the swing, get back to the move. And then if it's the pitch selection, then there's really nothing else to think about. Just get better pitches, see better pitches. I find that so interesting because it's it's almost like concentrated reps, right? If you go in thinking about one thing as opposed to I gotta do twenty things right, right. You say I'm focusing on one thing that I did poorly. Let me correct that one thing, and I'll worry about another thing next time. And right. You found yourself like. It, have you found it almost getting easier for you to make tangible corrections quickly now that you can, can kind of like isolate those one thoughts and then just immediately correct them? Yeah, yeah. I think I think the less less is more is obviously thinking wise. Like if you can get down to one cue as a hitter, I think that's the dream. Like just one thought, whether it's like um, whether it's like uh, something in like something in your backside, something in your load, or like. If there's one thought, that's all you have to do to get you on time. Then, like, you're gonna. That's when you're going well. And it, and when when it becomes a few thoughts, that's like. That just means that you're kind of like your body's off, your sequencing's off. Like if you're thinking about like my back hip, staying back, but also my hands at the same time. That's when you like run into problems. That's when you get in between. It's like it's too much. Like you're thinking about those two, and you're thinking about pitch coming in making a decision that's so the like, analysis paralysis right there yeah right? It's, it's, it becomes a lot and you can feel that too as a hitter you're like you're like panicking like you you're feel almost like, like short you were like that at times last year yeah i mean even even this year early like i felt like it was just uh when you like when you slump bad like that's bound to happen because yeah. like because what happens is like two things go wrong like you're swinging at bad pitches but also the like, good ones you're not making the right swings that's usually what a slump looks like because if you're swinging at bad pitches, but you're still putting good swings on good pitches. You probably you're gonna be all right. Like you might be swinging. You're Tim and Anderson. Missing, yeah, you're, you're doing quite fine. <laughs> yeah. So when it's when it's two issues, then like that's when it just starts to balloon, and like you got to step back and change something. You know, change the routine and BP, whatever it is, or change the thought, but make a change. One of the last questions for me, from me, because I know you're hitting clean up today and got a game to get to, yeah. but uh, yeah, who do you watch? I, I kind of know the answer to this question, but I'm always fascinated because I think it changes a little bit. There's new guys that you pick up on. I know you're a big fan of of watching the best at what they do because you do the same thing, and how do they do it? And trying to figure that out. Uh, who are the guys that you really enjoy to watch? Maybe if there's a couple obvious ones, who's maybe a lesser known name that you like to watch and are impressed by his moves and, and kind of take note of it? Um. Yeah, it's a good one. 
I should have more time to prepare. Yeah, sure. uh, I should have briefed you. I mean, I will say. Yeah, we, well, yeah, we emailed you the questions last night. So your pinecrest.edu email. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm slightly locked out of that one. Um, I mean, you guys were with me last night when I, I watched Trouts. And I watched it probably 100 times after that. <laughs> you watched it 100 times after Something that. Something like that. Just like I was Trout always. Trout always. Just because, like, anytime he gets a home run, it's, like, picture perfect. Like, that's what you... <laughs> That's like always what you want is to like look like my look like that. Like he always sticks his position. He always holds his balance. Like it's impressive. So like that guy I'll always stop to watch. Um, is there a lefty that stands out to you? Yeah, I mean lately Jock, just because he's been, he's been going crazy and like I really like the moves he makes in his swing as well. He's got like he's such a flowy rhythmy guy, but at the same time like really really efficient like once he makes his move which is like that's fun to watch so so, so we talked about this on the just baseball show and we were like so jock said that he got a cue from barry bonds and a conversation and yeah and then he hits the three home runs and then hits another home run the next day so like four and like five at bats we were saying i'm sure the cue helped but also maybe a little bit placebo i feel like you're the best person to ask for this or at least the best person available right now how much of that do you think was actually the cue helping somebody like that as a hitter or how much of it do you think was just i just talked to the best hitter in the world ever of all time and he gave me some advice i'm just gonna i feel good how much of it do you think was mental how much of it do you think was actually a cue that helped him as much as i've like listened to barry and like hit, listen to him talk about hitting like I would say the first one. Like, it was probably fully the cue. Wow. Or it could have been. I mean, I'm sure, obviously, it's Barry. So, like, the placebo plays into it. But, yeah. like, just the, the stuff he knows and the stuff, like, I've learned from him, just from hearing him talk about, like, and, like, little pieces. Like, mostly that you have to decode. Like, this is him directly telling Jock something. Yeah, if he's, if he's looking you in the and eyes. I bet it was something really, really good. Because, <laughs> like, it's Barry, dude. And I wish I really would wish I would know what that was. But, obviously – not privy to that and, and what's crazy is the fantasy football story is taking precedent right now yeah wow. it's all good. About um not exactly <laughs> i did it in high school once <laughs> sort of and i think that was probably it for that one it was a, that was the audition and didn't didn't go well didn't go well uh, last one for me one of one of the favorite spots in all the minors that I've played. I think uh, all things considered, you know, we got beach access, which is nice. Um, the field's awesome. Yeah, I love turf. Love the new turf. Um, and the great crowds. You know, great, it was packed crowds. last night. They were locked uh, in the whole game, yeah, even though you guys were getting end. beat. <laughs> At nine to one, beginning to end, um, and they're <laughs> for the always fireworks. for the fireworks, and they're always bringing good energy. So I mean, really, all you can ask for in a minor league spot. Tough question. I, I, I you, you might not love me asking, but I, I think it's, I would love to hear the answer. What is when it's all clicking for you and you put it all together? What does Griffin Conine look like as a baseball player? What does he look like? Yeah, I don't know what that means. Like. Is it a bunch of home runs and, and you know, still a little bit of swing and miss? Is it a, a balance across the board? Like, oh, you know, oh. what's the goal of, 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 you know, who you want to be as a finished product, I guess? Um, yeah, I would say, like, a balance. Like, 30, like 35 doubles, 35 homers. I got to I gotta work on the doubles. But I think just more line drives, more line drive oriented. And then, like, you'll get the, the, you'll, get the you'll get the homers, like, that are true fly balls. Um I think that's different, been different this year too. Like I think if you pull my line drive percentage, it would be crazy higher. You've already you're way up on the doubles and triples um, compared yeah. like relative to last year per game. On a per game basis, you're hitting way more doubles and triples. Uh, so w would you say that you know before you were a little bit more like I want to hit the ball 450 feet. Now it's more I can hit doubles and I'm strong enough where those doubles will turn into homers. I don't, it wasn't even count. Like, I wanted to hit line drives last year. I think I was just, like, I had certain hitches, like, in the swing that wouldn't allow me to do that. So, just, like, changing some stuff, making it simpler, taking out some extra moves, and that makes it the path, like, smaller, but, like, more true to the ball instead of kind of, like, kind of like this loopy where, like, I would catch, it would get great backspin, but I was hitting balls, like, 45 launch. And my average launch, if you could pull that, was probably – I don't know, 10, 20 degrees higher than this year, it feels like. Because I, like, I 
couldn't remember any, like, very few head-high liners that I hit. Like, I think I already have more this year than I did all of last year, just because, like, that was the swing. The swing was up here instead of instead of here. So, obviously, I, we, we like this, but the default <laughs> – the default has to be here so the misses can land. The misses can be hits. Last year, the misses were not, never hits. They're always out. So cheap hits are – you got to get cheap hits to have a good average. You have to. No one can hit 300 and only hit line drives. You got to get the cheapies. So. Not, even, not even Wander Franco. Not even Wander Franco. You can't. You got to hit the bloops, man. <laughs> and that's what that's what good hitters do. So just, just being able to mix in some bloopers here and there <laughs> helped a lot. Yeah, thank you, dude. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate the time. Absolutely. Let's make it five homers in a row. Uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to catching you in the cleanup spot tonight. All right. Can't wait.